Yo, what's up, guys? You got your boy Nandri here. Welcome to another video. So, for this video, this is gonna be the concept game show this deck. Now, I believe I've already uploaded one. I'll definitely go ahead and upload more. So, I, I played at least 10 to 15 games of this deck that the deck felt very, very smooth overall. Uh, I've only lost like two games, one of which was a misplay, one of which was not a misplay. Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and hop into the games. So unfortunately, the majority of my testing, as you can see, has been mostly versus Swordcraft, Havencraft, and uh, Runecraft. So this Runecraft came up, see, uh, the one at the top, uh, that one doesn't count because I wasn't actually playing the deck, I was playing something else. But uh, yeah, let's go and hop into it. So this first game, this first game is going to be very, very exciting. Well, and boring, I guess, at the same time. Alright, so versus Havencraft. So, I actually had no idea how this was gonna go, cause like, when I was testing the deck uh, internally versus a friend, he was he was, al he was also in Swordcraft, so I knew how it was gonna go versus Swordcraft, but I didn't know how it was gonna go versus anything else. So, I'll go ahead and I'll toss back the... I'll toss back the Hungering Horde, but I'll keep the Night Horde. I kept the Night Horde specifically because like, at some point he's probably gonna play a creature. Now, now you can argue that this is probably a misplay because you know, if he plays out say Mind News and things like that, it's a misplay. However, because I was going second, if he's Stormhaven, which I thought he was going to be because like, I, because in my opinion, in my, because in my opinion, like Stormhaven is the most like popular version of Havencraft. If he was Stormhaven, then on, on turn four, he wants to play a Bird Keeping Disciple. If he plays Bird Keeping Disciple, then by my logic, I was gonna go with Travel Gorgons. Uh, I'll go ahead and trade it, and I'll go ahead and trade into a Sport 3, and then I'll go ahead and Night Horde and clear it up. But here, I, I, I pick up the God Curve, like, like this curve is, just, is too nice. So I get to go Baphomet into Trial, into Night Horde, and that's just like, I, I, I have so many things just going for me at the time, and that's great. I pick up Tobes, Tove is good, Baphomet's also good. When he plays another Sacred Plea here, I know that he's now a slow Haven deck, and that's fine, I don't care. So I'll go ahead and play out Baphomet here. Batman pulls me Fang Serpent, that's nice. However, I want to play the Kaiser on three, just this way I, I have the carrot online. Use the scripture here, that's good for me. I, I pick up another Fang Serpent. Now when I pick uh, when I pick up the Fang Serpent, I, I opted to instead go for the go for the trial. So this way I have like a, a really good turn for it if he doesn't play out if he doesn't play out a creature. But here he plays out a creature because he feels pressured, and this is great for me now, because now I can just go Night Horde. I'll go Night Horde, but I'm not going to evolve. My my evolves are actually very very important because I because I, I use those to clear up, to clear up any like problem creatures in, in play. Additionally, the other reason why it's not good for me to use my evolve here is because this is the turn where he wants to play tea time. I, I can't actually evolve any of these creatures out of tea time range, so I want I want for it for a few tea times to this way I, I get hurt. I I lose as little as possible. Now he could have Star Torn, and the Star Torn would be very very good, but instead he has Cudgel. Yep, he banishes the bat. Uh, the correct play, honestly, though, is to actually kill off the second bat, but he doesn't do it, that's fine. So this turn, what we'll see me do here is I'll, I'll just go ahead and go Bathmet. Into Kaiza. I'm just gonna, I believe I just choose to ignore this. Yep, I just choose to ignore the cudgel. But then realize that, oh, well, if I ignore the cudgel, this now, ma this now makes some, some of his clears a little bit better. Uh, he's not going to thumb us this board, I know that, he knows that. But he will, however, play a Judge of Retribution. So I know he's on the, he's on the greedier side as far as lists go, and this will mean that I will have to use another Evo. That's fine by me, though. So I'll play out Singer here. And I'll go ahead and play out the Fang Serpent. So to be honest with you, playing out the Fang Serpent is better, because, you know, as, as you can see, I, I clearly don't need to draw. How, however, I choose to, pl I choose to play out the Singer as opposed to the Fang Serpent, because if he is Aegis, I do want to, you know, have a ward for later if I, act, if I absolutely need to try to block an Aegis shot, which is actually really, really relevant, um, as opposed to just, like, playing out my wards. Like, like you want to try to space your, ward, space your wards in such a way so you still have, you know, something going for you later. I go ahead and I evolve, I make the trade, and I'll push two more face damage. Now, the pushing two more face damage is actually kind of cool, because these tokens have been in place since, like, turn three, turn four, and they're, they're still here. Because, cause like, cause, cause he, he has so many different things. He, has, he just, you know, wants to remove. Here he uses the scripture. That's fine. I don't care. And then he uses the tribunal. Now the tribunal is kind of funny to me. Uh, 
Now, because he played the tribunal, I, I, I'm assuming he wants to play. E he wants to play either on, either on ten. But that's fine because here I, at the stunno, the stunno is the best possible punish for this board because it, it's lets him keep going wide. I don't have to use an evo. But now he's pressured. If he uses a Themis here, him using Themis is the best thing that can happen, that can happen for me because now I, I, I just get to go wide again. I get to go wide. I just get to reset the board. If he ha if he has it, cool. If he doesn't, that's fine with me. I don't care. Nope, I'll get, him, I'll get him play at the Fang Serpent here. I play at the Fang Serpent in order to protect the Medusa, because I will go ahead and use it my last Evo. He just used the Themis. So if the Medusa on a sticks, I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to win this game. But no, he has a second Themis. That's fine with me. I don't care. Because again, he's still back in the same spot. So now I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll refloor the bud. Uh, sorry, I'll refloor the board yet again. Now you refold. Now you re they refold the board. And you put as many things into play here, specifically because you want to go ahead and you want to make it so so he can't just like freely develop anything he wants to develop. If he wants to play cudgel here, that's fine. But I needed him to not play Aether. Like Aether is basically the card I'm trying to dodge, and I, I felt like he probably had it from the way he played. But instead, he plays out another tribunal, so my board is cleared again. <laughs> but that's fine. So here, I'll get and use that my Emeraldas. I wanted to try to use these for Storm, but it's, pre it's pretty clear that he's never going to hit me. And by the time he actually does get to hit me, that means I've already lost that. Here, he plays a Lucifer. Now, Lucifer was super annoying because, like, it's actually a very, very common thing that, that these that these Aether decks do a lot is that they play Lucifer. But I get to kill it because I have an Emeralda. He's, he's already used two Themises, so I get to just kill it, and I get to reset again. He plays at a curate, so, he, so he's healed for nine, but that's fine. I don't care. So I'll go ahead and I'll just go Night Horde here. I go Night Horde so this way I can go Hungering Horde, as well as Baphomet. So this way, I, he, is this way there, there's there's a less there's a lesser of a chance that he gets to snipe one of my four or five Emeraldas, and I get to hold as much removal as possible. But we know that well, Tribunal always hits the best target, and he also has the third Themis anyway. But now this is good because now I know that he's out of Themesis. Like so, anything I play now, it's going to stick. Like he just is such a worse deck when they don't actually have Themesis and things like that, just because like they can't actually pressure you now. Because now he's very very close to dead. He plays like yet another curate. But that's fine. So I'll just go travel the Gorgon here to trade. I'll use the Razor Claw here. I don't. I didn't have to use the Razor Claw, but I chose to use the Razor Claw because what I want to do here is, is I want to go ahead and protect and protect this. I want to go ahead and, pr and protect this. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll go face. However, he plays that. He finally plays at the Heavenly Aegis. But as we can see here, like he's still pretty just dead. I go ahead and top deck the spawn. The spawn just kind of sealed the deal because, like, there was a world in which if he had Grimner in his deck, which is something that, that some Haven players do, that he'd actually be able to Grimner, Grimner me and then, and then trade, and I would actually lose the game because I'd be off by three by three damage. But he doesn't have it, and I'm able to take the win. So one one spot of contention there was like was choosing to use a Razor Claw the way I did because, as you saw there, the uh, ultimately I I, I would have been off by three if I hadn't if I didn't have the spawn, but. But thankfully, it was able to work out for me. But but, uh, but I definitely think that in the future, I would go ahead and probably hold the Razor Claw and, and just try to like you know um, save it, save it as my reach. Because I was at twenty, like th th there was nothing I, I needed to be afraid of at twenty. So on, on to the next game. So where's the sword? Like I I, I find that the sect is like. Dis disgustingly wall versus sword. Just because, like, your tokens are better than their tokens, because like, your tokens gain tempo, like, whereas, like, their tokens, they just have, like, efficient stats. Like, efficient stats isn't always good. We see here that I go ahead and I, I get the nut curve again, but this time I'm going first. So, so let's go ahead and see how it works going first. So I'll go ahead and I'll play Bathman on two. It picks up a spawn. Now, spawn isn't what I wanted to see because I, because like, I'm pretty sure that this game will, will end before that. Here, he plays at a pure heart singer. Now, because of my other games, 
I, I like realized that, oh, well, I should probably try to play a little bit more aggressive with this deck. So what I'm gonna do here is I'll go ahead and play Trial of the Gorgons. And something that I've said in the past is that math is for blockers, and that's really true. Uh, so here we see that, see that I'm about to like outnumber him here. So I can go face that. I don't have to trade. I, I just need to, I can, I can go face. Like this is a two one, like the Baphomet makes no value trades or anything like that. So I can afford to go face. If he plays that Rabbit here, that's fine. You draw one card. I, I'm also here just strong cards. That's fine. He makes the trade that way and that's fine by me. Cause now what I can do is I'll just go ahead and go Night Horde to trade. And I'll just, I'll just keep going face. Like again, all of my units, they don't lift trades. Like, what the, but what they do is, is they survive and they go face. Now, I do get punished here because he, he does find the Lyrial and that's fine. So he'll go ahead and pick it off, make a trade. And then, he'll, and then if he's smart, he'll go face. Yep, he goes face. But this is fine for me. Because what I can do now is I can just go trial again, pick up, pick up yet another Stunno, and I can go Hungering Horde. And then I can evolve over the Unica, so all of this damage that I've done, all of that's going to stick. And the only thing it cost me was two damage. That's fine. Due to nerfs, he, he, he cannot play Council Card Knights on five, which means this, which means this turn is a turn where I need to get aggressive. I need to put as many things into play as possible. However, the Goblin Princess will allow him to evolve, and it might be a really good evolve for him. However, we see that that's actually not that good because I have the Fenrir, so I'll go ahead and trade. I'll go ahead and go Fenrir. The Fenrir will, will trade will trade into his Goblin, and then we'll kill off the Goblin Princess. Yes, he will get the Goblin King, but we know that because of all the Stenos in my hand, if he plays out the Goblin King, he loses the game. He, he has to go wide this turn, but going wide isn't good because you're not allowed to do that because of the because of the Fenrir. So he'll go ahead and he'll evolve. Uh, this evolve was a little bit questionable to me because I, I, th I think I would make the evolve the other way. But he wants to go ahead and try to preserve board, which is fine. But I have an MRL, my friend, so even that play doesn't work out for you. So, <laughs> so here, you know, like he just concedes because, like, he went second, used all of his Evos as sword. I still somehow have an Evo left, and I have I have just as many cards in hand. But all of my cards outscale all of his cards, which shouldn't happen because, like, he's playing neutrals. On paper, all, all of his cards have inherently have more value than my cards have. Alright, so we'll go on to another sword game. Now, I was kind of confused here at the at the time because like I was like hmm like I seem to be I seem to be facing a lot of like AA players and they're all playing sword I, I wonder what that's about so I kept the night horde the night horde is always good on board like night horde is one of the strongest things you can do like even if it only does two damage as long as it kills the creature that you hit it with that you still can get anywhere from from a plus two to a plus three that's gross just disgusting I pick up the god curve again like. Uh, it's different because I don't have that Baphomet, but I have the Unica. The Unica is actually just as good, and but then to, but then to steal the deal, I, I did pick up the Baphomet anyway, and I was like, okay, all right. I play out the Unica here. The Unica is nice. However, here he shows me that he's a memer and he's playing Cal he's playing uh, Castle in the Sky, but that's fine for me. I, I don't care. I'll still get him play out the trial. This is good for me because now I can go and make a value trade here. I make the value trade to make his removal a little bit less good. If he wants to play a Geno here, the Geno dies on board and I can do whatever I want to him. That's that's amazing. So he'll go ahead and he'll trade here. That's again, that's fine by me. Now what I can do is I can go ahead and I can go I can make a Medusa. I have three bats in play, so he actually has to kill the Medusa at this time. As opposed to as opposed to just you know killing off killing off the bats in order to try to stop it. But the Medusa's at a 5-5, so if he wants to kill this, he has to have either a second Geno, a Maisie, or he has to evolve an Albert to try to stop the Medusa. All of those are, aren't good plays. If he had if he had, had a round table as well, the round table would have done it if the round table picked up exactly Mars into White Paladin. But instead he makes this play. This play is this play is never the play. Like yeah, you get a lot of you get a lot of like counters on your on, on your castle, but I get a Medusa. Like or sorry, but I get a Medusa on him, and I still have the 5-5 five five in play. That's uh pretty good. So here I'll go ahead and put and play out the Uriel. I play out the Uriel specifically because like I, I want to give this hexproof. I I, I want to punish him for, for making this play because this play was really bad. 
I'll go ahead and trade into all the tokens to, to keep as much HP on my on my on my Medusian as possible. But I will go ahead and evolve the ward. I'll go ahead and trade. I'll go and crack. I'll go and crack in the face for five. So this is good because like my Medusa is, is 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 both hexproof and behind a ward. And and the and the next turn if he can't actually clear off these if he can't actually clear off this if he can't actually clear off the Medusa uh, the Medusiana or the Medusa he's actually dead. So he plays that Avon Blader. Nope, that wasn't the play. And now you're just dead because I'll go ahead and evolve this. And evolve Medusiana does nine damage. Albert eat your heart out like nine damage. And so he's just dead on six. <laughs> So yeah, I was just able to get there because uh, Medusiana is uh, really strong. We we can protect it from behind a ward that has hex that, that has bane and it's also hexproof. <laughs> All right, so let's see where are we now. All right, on to the next game. So this game was also equally funny. Like, and at this point, like I'm just over here just like laughing, just having a blast because. Uh... <laughs> Cause, Cause this deck, this deck actually feels like really, really cool to play. Like, and I was actually learning so much as, as I was playing it. And that, that's one of the best things that they can have happen is like when you go ahead and homebrew, you actually like, you actually feel like you learn a lot. So this game, I'm going second. That's fine. Again, like the good thing about this deck is that like, is that versus creature based decks, you really don't care if you go first or second. Like, it, it usually doesn't matter. So because I'm, because because it was versus sword and because I didn't know if it was if it was aggro or not, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll keep the Unica as well as the Fang Serpent. I pick up the Bath Bed as well. So, so if he doesn't play out a two drop here for some reason because he's because he's like a slower sword deck, I can go ahead and just uh, play out the Bath Bed be fine. But instead he plays out the he plays out the Blade of Hedgehog. Now I go ahead and I remove this. I remove this because I don't care if he if he plays out Mars, which is probably is probably gonna be what he what he chooses to do. Yep, because everyone plays out Mars on three. Like I I don't like playing out Mars on three. Is that ever correct? So here I'll go ahead and play out the Fang Serpent. I play out the Fang Serpent specifically because like if he plays out Geno, the Geno will uh will not will have a very, very unfortunate time. Instead he plays out White Paladin. The White Paladin play is actually really really good for him. Because it means that now I have to evolve my two drop. Which will actually die in the process. So yeah. So so because I knew this, I'll go ahead and play out both my Bathmets here. The Unica is useful for me because it had uh because I still have a toe in my hand. Yep, I'll go ahead and trade. That's fine. The nice thing about this is that he's already used up a Mars and a White Paladin, so like if he has round table here, which I don't think he does, but if he does, but if he did, it'd be less good for him. He plays that Luminous Mage. That's fine. The Luminous Mage plays very, very well into my into my Scarlet Sabar. Yep. So we'll see me go ahead and make that play, and now I, now I have a four two. He can't make any really good plays into this without using a removal spell in the first place. But most sword players usually don't like play play like that much removal. So, yeah. So he's in a rock and a hard place right now. Like his best play would maybe, maybe say be Kahulin, but instead he chooses to use his White Paladin. That's fine. He also plays out a Guilt. Again, that's fine too. I don't care. He evolves the White Paladin, which is a uh, kind of interesting to me. I don't think I would have evolved here. He makes the trade. Yep. So now he has to, so now he just has some tokens in play. That's fine by me, I don't care. But now he leaves me with a prime with a prime knight horde target, and I'll just gonna play out my Unica here. So he can't actually clear the Unica on board, so he's most likely gonna be pressured into giving me his last diva. If he gets his last diva, that's good for me. But here he makes another luminous luminous mage play. He'll evolve the luminous knight. Now evolving the luminous knight is a little bit greedy on my in my opinion, but uh, it's, it's fine. Because here he leaves me with a prime night horde target. That's great. So now I can go ahead and go night horde. Clear that off. I'll go ahead and play out a Kaiza to get my carrot I think to get my carrot engine online. I'll evolve the Kaiza. And this way I get the trade. And now yet again I have three creatures in play and he has nothing. Also, let's go ahead and quickly look at his hand size. I control eight cards, he controls three. He he has the Eva advantage, but the Eva advantage means nothing. He plays at a round table to, to get to get out Juliet's. Ju he uh, <laughs> he also misplays it because he didn't actually play play out the Hedgehog first. You definitely play out the, hedge the Hedgehog first, but uh, nope. So here I just get to go to into Kaiza. I'll go ahead and trade here. Make another trade. 
Night Horde him again, and now I have five creatures in play. I still have the same amount of cards, and he actually has less cards. He has a White Paladin here. White Paladin is actually one of the best things he could have picked up. Like, the other best thing he could have picked up was, let's say, a round table to get the White Paladin and the Mars. But, unfortunately, with just the White Paladin, the White, just the White Paladin by itself is not going to be good enough. So I'll get to go trade. Singer, draw a card. And defend rare. Trade again. Fender prox. Make one more trade. One more trade. Go face. So to be honest with you, if you want, you can actually go ahead and make the value trade and keep one and keep one token alive. Uh it doesn't really change that much, but just because like as you can see, like I, I don't need I don't need him to be at zero for me to win this game. All they need to do is just keep having more cards than him and I'll go ahead and, and I'll go ahead and win eventually. Yep, he trades into my Kaiza, because that's, that's really the only, good, the only good option he has for a trade. So here, I'll go ahead and trade here to, to roll a 50-50. I don't get the 50-50, but that's fine, I don't care. It does it does mean that they'll have to MRL to him, but that's fine, like, I, I, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with all of this. He plays an Albert here, but look, but look at this, like, the Albert literally just dies, like, <laughs> it's not even good. I have the spawn and yeah, but but like 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 the game's over. Like like he knows this, I know this. Like the, the only way he can come back is if he say has a Grimnir, but he but he would have to have like double Grimnir, which isn't even good enough on its own. Or he would have to have like say a Leonidas and just say like Grimnir or something like that. Like like he, he he just needs too many cards in order to come back, and that's uh that's not a good spot for you to be in. Right, so on to the last game. This game again is, is gonna be versus sword. Now, the other two games, uh, which, which were both RuneCraft games, they will not be versus Sword, they'll be versus other things. This game was funny to me because, like, um, because so far, like, I, I've only shown you, get, I've only shown you, like, what it does versus, like, versus, like, opposing, like, creature-based midrange. But now to show you what it does versus aggro. He plays a quick later here, so now I know he's aggro. I'm also very, very sad because I'm like, oh, okay. I have the second hungering, the second hungering horde, but I don't have any like life gain or any like wards in my deck right now, so it's not a good spot. Thankfully for me, he, he plays a double quick player here, which now means my, my Hungering Horde is insane. It, it gets me, like, incredible value, and it stops a lot of bleeding. Like, it's very, very important that versus Aggro, that I stop the bleeding as fast as possible. He plays a Novice Trooper here, that's fine, I don't care. I believe I'll go ahead and Hungering, and hungering Horde it again, just because, like, that's the best play. Because, like, so, sometimes, some of these Aggro players, they, they're randomly playing stuff like, say, Geno. And that'd be a disaster for me if he had it, so... I take more damage, and now I'm at the danger zone. If he has, like, say, Albert into... If he say he has Albert into Alitas, I die. So I need to go ahead and I, I need to pressure him uh, from dropping me to, to 10. So I'll go ahead and I'll make the Medusa play. I'll get the two tokens, so if he doesn't actually do this... Uh, sorry, if he doesn't actually... If he, does, if he doesn't actually make the trade, I'll get the Medusa, and I'll be able to kill anything he plays. Instead, he plays an Emeralda here. Goes, sorry, not Emeralda, Ephemera, and he goes face anyway. So I get my Medusiana. And also, I pick up Scarlet Sabor. So now I can go ahead and just Sabor. I go back up to 10. Or sorry, 11. I'll go ahead and I'll also evolve the Medusiana. To be honest with you, you don't actually have to you don't actually have to evolve the Medusiana. You technically you can actually evolve the, the Sabor instead. By by pre-evolve it specifically so this way, he knows that he needs to either kill me this turn or he needs to kill some part of the sport. He needs to make trades. If you ever like with the line he's been taking, if he ever makes trades, he loses. But apparently he he thinks differently. So uh, I just I just want you guys to know that like quickly take a look here. We know that on board. I have 16 damage, 16 damage in play. So if for any reason I have anything, I have anything that can that can remove his uh, that can remove his guy by just trading, he dies. Like, so literally any creature in the game, he dies. So he actually had to make trades. There, but he didn't make the trades. So I just get to punish him and kill him. Yep. So I'll, I'll just go and go Fenrir here. Yep. 
I'll go I'll go ahead I'll go ahead and evolve as well for the salty rubbins. Yep. And then I'll just kill him with the Medusiana. Like that game was was pretty funny to me because like he had not one but two different but two different opportunities to stop the Medusiana. Doesn't do it. Doesn't actually doesn't actually count the damage that I have in play and just like dies because like a lot of aggro players just don't think at all. I like, guess just all face all the time. Like, but uh, but overall, like I said, like like the deck is like very very it's very very fun. Uh, Body sword, which is a uh, pretty good like. <laughs> Just because, like, if you if you have like better overall value than like sword over, like it, it feels very very nice. Like, uh, this deck kind of beats sword in the same way that like Midrange Shadow beats sword, and that like, well, my my creatures kind of like they they don't have they don't have it as as, as, my, as many like stats, but they do kind of uh outvalue you over through like through just like sheer like utility and whatnot, and just like out resourcing you because like all of my creatures replace themselves, none, none of your creatures replace themselves. But yeah, like I really like playing the deck a lot, uh, and, and I'll probably I'll probably go and play it, play it a little bit more probably probably like this week maybe next week. I do plan on working on some other like deck building things uh, for you guys. But, uh, but yeah, if you enjoyed the video, go and leave a like. Go and hit the subscribe button if you haven't. Let me know what you think about mid blood down in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching.